All right, guys, I realized that many of you gave me a ton of suggestions on the previous episode of this kind of videos, which I'm planning to continue in the future. And of course, I'm talking about no more and no less than the rarest cards to find on multiplayer in Asphalt Night Legends. In today's episode, I will be partly influenced by your suggestions, but of course, I will add a few of the cards I have almost never seen in multiplayer in a long time. So with nothing else to add, let's get into it. As usual, I won't start on D-Class because as I already said, if you ended the previous multiplayer season on Platinum League or above, you start the next season at Silver League. This is basically using the Donkeyboard DA GTO, which is having a car hand at the exact same moment of making this video, even though I'm not sure if we will be already at the Riot stage or if it's still possible to play the normal car hand stage. One way or another, this car never was really common in multiplayer before and honestly I don't know why, because despite of being a low C-Class car in terms of rank, it's extremely fun to drive mostly thanks to its great acceleration and handling, which makes it a really easy car to control, making it ideal for beginners or those players who are getting introduced into manual driving, for example. The top speed isn't the best since at the end if it's on low C-Class is for a reason, but everything else on this car is really good, good enough to beat cars with higher top speeds like the Pininfarina H2 speed or the Acura NSX to name a few of the most common ones among those who are starting on the game. If you have missed this Donkey Board the GTO car hand, don't worry because in the future it will likely appear again and if I were you I wouldn't miss the chance to get this car in the future. Ok, so after this introduction it's time to move into B-Class where I will be starting with the McLaren 765LT, a car which was released back in the Bugatti Bolli Drive Syndicate as a support car and since then it hasn't been really common to spot in multiplayer even though a decent amount of people could unlock. It. The problem of course was the fact that this car unless you have it pretty much maxed out, it's not a great nor a solid option for multiplayer, which I guess it's what explains why it's so hard to see these days. I got the chance to max mine during the last season appearance of the epic import parks available by tokens on the game shop and since I wanted to max out the Lamborghini SC63, I ended up collecting like 20 epic import parts of this McLaren, which were more than enough to max it, I think even twice, but as everyone knows, the epic import parts donation system will never appear, so it is what it is. This car has an okay acceleration combined with a great top speed of 362 km per hour and a handling that, if it's true that doesn't feel bad, feels weird, which is not great either. The net efficiency is average, so you shouldn't have a big problem with this car in most of the cases. Ok, so right after that one, we have a car that many of you asked me to add on this video and this is the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento, a car that I remember so damn well because of how bad its special event was back when the Lamborghini Countach 2022 was released for the first time ever through a weird season with star requirements to complete the tasks. The Lamborghini Sesto Elemento was required in many of those season missions and its special event was quite tricky to say the least with not the easiest requirements considering this is a B-class car. This car however has a nice acceleration top speed and nitro efficiency but the problem is that it has problems with its drifting. And not because it's wide, because it isn't, but because you lose speed faster than usual if you take a longer drift than expected with this car. Still it's really nice from a general perspective, so I would say that it's weird to see just because of how hard it was to lock, excepting for a few Android guys who got it for like 10,000 season tokens due to an error in the pack prices a few months ago. The next car which I have rarely seen around is the Porsche Carrera GT, another B-class car with one of the most insane special event decals ever released into this game, which is extremely similar to the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento with the exception that the Carrera GT doesn't lose a ton of speed while drifting and I would say that the only disadvantage quote unquote, this car has is the acceleration, but not by a huge margin, it's just that around this rank many many cars have massive acceleration stats. The Carrera GT has a wonderful night efficiency combined with a top speed of 362 km per hour and not a bad handling but as I said it hasn't been the easiest car to obtain through the years and considering that the Lamborghini Huracan isn't that far away from the Carrera GT in terms of general performance it's not hard to understand why it's not that common to see this car in multiplayer. Ok, so now it's A-class time and I will be checking out the Ferrari 812 Superfast, a car that despite it's available through the Legends store where you can get blueprints and epic import parts for it, 
it's been a really long time since I don't see a Ferrari super fast on any kind of multiplayer. And I don't know why, because I thought that this one would be similar to the Ferrari TDF in terms of performance, but it's far better with a huge top speed combined with a nice nitro efficiency and not the worst handling and drifting really. So I would say once again that we are in front of a car that it's just not really easy to obtain and max out where it's actually the most useful but that its performance isn't really bad. So I would say it's just a matter of availability, I guess. Another car that I have seen very, very, very few times on multiplayer is the Lamborghini SC20. And I know that many of you guys ask for the Lamborghini Essenza to be available in this video, but being completely honest, I don't really think that the Lamborghini SC20 is way more uncommon these days. Even though it was released through a Grand Prix, I guess it's because of how rare it has come back or just because many people got this car during its first and only Grand Prix, but at low stars, even though I consider this car to be somewhat useful from four stars onwards, since you know it has a decent acceleration, top speed, handling and nitro, which makes this car a quite balanced car overall. But still, it's true that this car hasn't been released way too many times after its original release. So up to a point, I think it's normal that people don't use it that much in multiplayer in general. I can't say the exact same thing about the Porsche 911 GT2 Club Sport, which recently appeared on the game right on the previous season, to be more precise, where you could get the key to lock it from a special event, if I'm not wrong, but only, of course, if you had the car at six stars before, which obviously it's something that many people choose not to do. And don't get me wrong, there is nothing bad about it. I mean, the Porsche 911 GT2 Club Sport is a great car, but it isn't a king or something like that, so it's fine if you choose to not to max it out just to get its key, because at the end of the day, its performance is quite epics reliant, so you will have to get a few epic import parts of this car in order to get the proper potential out of this one. This car massive spoiler creates some certainly funny situations when it comes to physics, but in everything else, it's quite fun and nice to drive with a huge nitro efficiency and a not so bad top speed and acceleration that makes this car a strong competitor on the right hands. But yeah, it's not easy to get its key, so, so unless you got it back at its Grand Prix, which was years ago, I doubt I will get to see this car more often in multiplayer. At last but not least, I will check out some of the hardest cars to find in multiplayer from S-Class, and since I can't mention those cars that I don't own, I will start with the Aglani Dracuma. This car is weird in a few aspects, and not only on the way it looks. First of all, it's hard to spot on multiplayer for the sole reason that not a ton of people decided to go for it back at its first special event, something understandable considering how mid the car is in most of its stats. However, mid doesn't mean useless, so if you are a bit lucky, even with a skill issue like mine, you can end up uh, a race with a positive points balance with this Aglani Dracuma. But of course, today we are talking on the Devil Days, so I'm pretty sure that the Dracuma was a bit more common before the release of the final king of the game. I would like to point out that I saw a Aglani Dracuma driver a few weeks ago on multiplayer, so it's not impossible to spot one of these, but it's definitely quite hard for the reasons I explained a few seconds ago. I had to max this car because it was required on a special event, I think, pretty much like the Torino Super Sport, but the Torino is is still a bit more common than this Aglani Dracuma. Then we have the W Motors Fenir Supersport. You know what guys, I was talking about this car with some old players a few days ago before making this video and there was a general consensus of how good this car was back in the days when the Bugatti Chiron and the Trion Nemesis were pretty much the best cars you could use at the time. Let's remember that this Fenrir is one of the initial release cars, so it has been around since the game was globally released, but as more cars kept appearing, the Fenrir kept losing positions over and over again until we reach this exact moment in time where it's safe to say that it's not as useful as it used to be anymore. The acceleration is not terrible, but the nitro isn't godly, the top speed despite being quite high isn't the most ideal, and the handling isn't as good as other cars you can find around these ranks, so if you add to that the fact that it's a car that takes a ton of time to max, and let's not even mention to call, the truth is that not finding this Fenrir Super Sport nowadays is no surprise, honestly. And at the last position of this video, I have decided to add the Masanti Evantra Mil Cavalli, a car that never was really good in general, that only came a few times in the past, and that these days can't be obtained anymore, because as I told you guys about the Inferno, this Mazanti Evantra Mile Cavalli has license issues that ended up making the car impossible to obtain these days in the game, since it doesn't appear on the garage, 
unless you have a few blueprints of the car. Same thing happened on Asphalt 8, so it's safe to say that it's not coming back anytime soon. In general, it's just a mid car with not the fastest top speed, nor acceleration, nor the best handling or drift capabilities, so it's a quite forgettable car at the same time, which pretty much sums up why it's so rare to see in multiplayer these days. And these were pretty much all the cars from this episode guys. I do really think I still have material for a third episode in this game, which hopefully I will find time to make in the upcoming weeks, since this week I have been extremely busy, so it's quite hard to find time to edit or prepare videos. Let me know your thoughts about these cards in the comment section, make sure to drop your like and subscribe to not to miss anything about Asphalt 9 Legends. And I will see you really soon as usual with much more Asphalt content. Goodbye guys.